A 40-year-old male with history of hypertension and diabetes is brought to your emergency room with altered mental status. He had a Glasgow coma scale of 7 and was subsequently intubated. Upon exam, he was noted to be afebrile with stable hemodynamics and adequate oxygen saturation. His blood work was notable for mild leukocytosis, anion gap acidosis, the equation for an anion gap acidosis is sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate and is typically corrected for albumin. His drug screen was also negative for any salicylate or aspirin. Being the astute intensivist that you are, you are concerned about possible ethylene, glycol, and methanol poisoning given the high anion gap. So you check an osmolar gap, which ends up being high as well. Just as a reminder, the osmolar gap is the difference between the measured osmolarity minus the calculated osmolality. And the calculated osmolality is obtained by the equation 2 times sodium plus the B1 divided by 2.8 plus the glucose divided by 18 plus ethanol divided by 4.6. You might find a different denominator for the ethanol part and that depends on the equation that you use. During your workup, you accidentally obtain two lactic acid values, one with the point of care machine that you have in the ICU and the other one which was sent to the lab. Interestingly, you notice a significant difference between the point of care lactic acid level compared to the serum lactic acid level. So why would there be a difference between both measurements and could that potentially be of any clinical value? We'll try to simplify this by explaining the metabolism of ethylene glycol. However, the same can be used to explain methanol poisoning as well. Normally, ethylene glycol is metabolized to glycoldehyde using the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. Glycoldehyde is subsequently metabolized to glycolic acid or glycolate using the enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase. Glycolate is subsequently metabolized into glycoxylic acid, oxalate, and calcium oxalate. It is worthwhile noting that while the ethylene glycol is the substance responsible for creating the osmolar gap, it is the glycolic acid and glycoxylic acid that causes the anion gap. Therefore, depending on how soon the patient presents to you, you may either see a very high osmolar gap, a very high anion gap, or both, depending on how much ethylene glycol and glycoxylic acid and glycolic acid is in the system. Glycolic acid and glycoxylic acids are the substances responsible for most of the signs of the symptoms of ethylene glycol poisoning, including the renal failure and hypocalcemia. When treating cases of ethylene glycol poisoning, famipazole or ethanol can be used to block the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme. This will facilitate renal excretion of ethylene glycol without being metabolized. On the other hand, pyridoxin and thiamine can be used to try to convert the metabolism of glycoxylic acid into less toxic metabolites. With both enzymes, alcohol dehydrogenase and aldehyde dehydrogenase, NAD is converted to NADH, which combines with pyruvate to produce lactic acid. Now, while that might explain why lactic acid is produced with ethylene glycol poisoning, it does not explain the discrepancy between both values. In order to understand that, we have to know how is the lactic acid measured in the lab. In general, there are two main ways to measure lactic acid. One relies on the lactate oxidase system, and the other one on the lactate dehydrogenase system. Lactate oxidase metabolizes lactate into pyruvate, producing hydrogen peroxide, which can be detected by the system. On the other hand, lactate dehydrogenase converts lactate into pyruvate and produce NADH, which is also picked up in the system. Interestingly though, glycolate, a metabolite of ethylene glycol, can utilize lactate oxidase to produce glyoxylate and also produce hydrogen peroxide, which can be detected by the lactate oxidase system. This is mainly due to the similar structure between glycolate and lactate. Therefore, going back to our graph, it's very likely that the lactic acid measured by the serum system is the lactate dehydrogenase-based system, which measured the true lactic acid. 
On the other hand, our point of care lactate measured both the lactate and glycolate as it was utilizing the lactate oxidase system. The difference between both values slowly decreased with time as the patient received treatment and the glycolic acid level decreased in the body. So how can this help you in your ICU? Well, first and foremost, knowing the method your lab is using to check for serum lactate can be very helpful, especially if your lab uses both methods, the lactate oxidase system and the lactate dehydrogenase system. Using both systems in the right clinical setting may help you identify patients who have a lactate gap who may potentially have ethylene glycol poisoning in the right clinical setting. This may be useful as ethylene glycol and methanol levels may take a little bit longer to actually be processed, which may not be useful in the acute setting. If you like the content of this channel, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with your friends.